Uh, I'm just concerned Mr. de Blasio's efforts to do other things with it. Uh, it's going to destroy the entire process. Well, seconds, it's not going to destroy again. Seconds. Again, I would ask that Mr. Loda not use incendiary terms. It's not going to destroy the process. We're talking about how to use this money to help the people affected. For example, folks on the south shore of Staten Island lost their homes, lost their businesses, lost a huge amount of money just surviving since Sandy. Let's get them some of the job opportunities created by this federal aid. What I'm saying is I don't want to see a lot of good work done and all the money flow to out-of-state contractors, for example. I want to make sure that the spending we do maximally helps the very same people affected and gives them a little more economic opportunity. I believe we can do both. Thank you, sir. Let, let's move on. Mr. Lauder, what the fuck is that for a mayor? And is well, that the kind of thing we could expect for four years no. if you win? It's not the kind of thing you can expect for four years. Here's what happened, and I may need more than a minute to explain it. But I was on the phone with the governor's office, and they told me to hold on because uh, Mayor Bloomberg was about to do a press conference. I just told the governor's office that we were going to be opening the Midtown Tunnel tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Mike Bloomberg gets up, and he makes a statement that I don't think the Midtown Tunnel will open up for weeks on end, the amount of damage, yada, yada, yada. Believe me, when I heard that statement, and unfortunately I had a New York Times reporter tailing me the whole day, I told the governor's director of operations, what an idiot. That's what I said. He made a statement that was completely wrong. I apologize because the New York Times said I called him an idiot. Eh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But the fact of the matter is, I have always told it the way I see it. I will do that as mayor, and if I'm wrong, I'll apologize. And if I'm not wrong, I'm going to stick with it. That's who I am. The part about mall cops? Oh, the part about mall cops, I was in the middle of a debate with the National Organization for Women, the president of now here in New York, uh, Sandra Sonia, said to me, you know, the, the JFK airport is the epicenter of uh, human trafficking in the United States. What should we do about it? And what I basically said was the following, that the Port Authority Police needs to work much more closer with both the NYPD and federal law enforcement and not act like the words you used, which I will never use again. Um, <laughs> I think, I, I think we got it. I think we got it. You know what, let's, let's move on. Let's Wait, I have to respond to this, because there is a pattern here. Let's be clear. Uh, he said a moment ago, I would annihilate charter schools. He said, I would destroy our efforts at Sandy <laughs> if I tried to make sure the people affected by Sandy got jobs. He called the mayor an idiot. He called law enforcement officials mall cops. He insulted law enforcement officials. That's not what a mayor does. A mayor unifies. A mayor shows respect. A mayor makes sure we set a positive tone in the city. We have to do tough things in city government. But we do it from the perspective of respecting the people we work with and the Thank people we both. work for. And I haven't seen that in Mr. Lotus. Thank you both. Let's, let's, let's move on. My entire let's career, I've done nothing but work with people and bring them together. Uh, your, ad ad certainly done, your ad I've doesn't look like something that's trying to bring people together, Mr. Lotus. It's, it trying, really it's doesn't. trying to tell people what would happen to it's you and how dangerously reckless you it's are. It's race-baiting it and fear-mongering. Okay. You, you know it. Stop. You know it. There is nothing race-baiting about it. There's nothing race-baiting about it. You want to throw out the race card? I just said it. Let's talk about let's talk about the various different mask cards that are put out for the thousands of people that are killed in this city. Let's talk about the report cards for the kids who are being kept in uh, failing schools. Let's talk about the scorecard that says New York City is the highest tax city in the country. Don't tell me I threw out the race card because there is nothing racial in there. Mr. And Bill, you cannot stick to that. Mr. can be as, as uh, upset as he wants to be. I'm not but upset. But the bottom line is, the <laughs> bottom line is, his ad depicted images of riots, of dead bodies in the streets, of racial imagery clearly meant what, to be fear and Go what look at your own imagery? ad. Go look no, at your no, own no, ad. You tell Anybody me who looks in at that ad, ad knows what he's up to and is what his boss, Rudy Giuliani, used to be up to, and it's not what a mayor should be doing. Okay. Look, I'm, I am getting sick and tired of you impugning the integrity of Rudy Giuliani. Let me tell you I something. Would be happy he, was to the man, Mr. he was the man. He was the man. Who created the Renaissance in this city? Who started the programs to make all New Yorkers safe, to expand our economy, to expand our jobs? And you keep impugning his integrity. He did well, more to divide the city than David any mayor Dinkins in recent memory. David Dinkins did more to divide this city than any. David Dinkins did more to divide this city during his true. period of time. The murders that happened, the actual race riots that happened. Believe me, the reason why he got thrown out is because he was divisive. You know, Joe Lota is using a Republican right-wing playbook. I have seen this more times than I could count. I compared his ad to the Willie Horton ad because it immediately reminded me of it. I felt like it was the 1980s all over again. We've got to get away from this. Rudy Giuliani did divide us, very consciously. 
and it hurt this city and it held us back and we've done a lot better since then. Okay, okay. gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen please, 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 please. What just... color is the sky in your planet? Gentlemen, gentlemen. <laughs> Only ten ago. minutes ago, we had a kumbaya moment. Mr. Lota appears to think he has his own planet. No, I don't have my own planet, but you're making absurd comments. Only, you're making only, absolutely only absurd ten comments minutes ago, we had only impugning me. Only ten minutes ago, we had a kumbaya moment. No, he had. We had he had a kumbaya moment. What if we? What if we? What if we? I tried to offer it as a joint kumbaya. What if we say timeout? What if we say time out? I think we got the idea. We got the idea where you stand. Let's move on. Period of time. You took phone calls from the community in Crown Heights and you sat on it. Please tell me what, what this means and how you would now react to a crisis in the city of New York. Now here we go again. Mr. Loda is misrepresenting the facts. And look, the bottom line I've said that was a tragic moment in our city's history. And what I learned from that moment is that we have to use overwhelming force when we're confronted with such a situation. I'd also like to note that that same administration was the one that achieved the Safe Street, Safe City program that brought our police force up to 38,000 officers and allowed us to start turning the corner on crime and bringing us to where we are today. So I think it's important to look at history the way it really was and not ascribe to people a role they didn't play. Uh, but more importantly, it's important to recognize uh, the full history of that administration and what was done right and what helped us to become a safer city. Mr. de Blasio, your question for Mr. Loda. Absolutely. Mr. I'm Loda, sorry. Um, you know, during the Republican primary, when you were seeking uh, the support of conservative Republicans, you went to a Tea Party gathering in Staten Island. You explicitly asked for the support of a Tea Party activists. In fact, you told them they should be comforted that, in quote, many, many ways, their philosophy was similar to yours, the same Tea Party that just shut down our government. I think it was the same gathering where you told them that it should be easier to get gun permits in the city of New York. So my question is simply, are, are you comfortable with the fact that you sought Tea Party support for your candidacy in the Republican primary? You know, Bill, you talk about tea so much, you remind me of the Mad Hatter. I'll be honest with you. The, the idea, I went, I was invited to go talk to the Tea Party. I went out there and talked. And there are some things I agree with them on. I agree in what they believe in in the Constitution. I totally disagree with what they did in Washington. You sought their support. Let's be clear, you didn't just go I for saw, the purpose of I hanging out with them. You sought their support. support. I was running you against the, the guy. You just said you sought the support of the Tea Party in the Republican primaries. I here? sought the support of everyone on Staten Island because I was running against a guy who actually ended up spending somewhere between 12 and $13 million impugning my integrity. I went all over Staten Island. Can you explain sure why it's acceptable to seek Tea Party support when the Tea Party works against the interests of New York City every single day? Honestly, you're, you are the Man Hatter. All you want to do is talk about tea. Listen, I wanted the support of all New York. I am going to be the mayor of all New York. I am not going to divide the city. I am not going to in any way, shape, or form say, I'm going to talk to that person, but I'm not going to talk and to that person. And you're on the conservative that party is, line. The conservative party line. The questions does he The conservative have? party that... <laughs> I just want to make three quick points. You, know, you, you had an incredible display here of the contrast between candidates. Sometimes there are elections where people say, wow, I can't tell them apart, or what's the real difference? Well, I think you saw plenty of difference tonight, plenty of contrast, and I want to note uh, three areas. One, it's abundantly clear uh, that Joe Loda wants to continue the policies of stop and frisk that have divided police and community. He did not offer the slightest recognition of the problem that's been created by the overuse of stop and frisk, the constitutional problem, the community relations problem, the rift it's caused between police and community that's made us less safe. He literally did not acknowledge the existence of the problem and offered no solutions, no reform. I obviously believe we need to fundamentally reform our approach. Uh, we need a new police commissioner who will address the problem. Uh, and I think the people of the city want that reform and believe that fundamentally we can have that reform and stay safe. Second. On the question of taxes, I've made very clear uh, it's time to tax the wealthiest New Yorkers so we can fix our schools. Uh, Mr. Loda has made abundantly clear he wants to give tax breaks to wealthy people and tax breaks to major corporations. I called him out on it time and time again. It is trickle-down economics. It is a, classical, a classic Republican worldview. Uh, he didn't in any way, shape, or form show a willingness to ask the wealthy uh, to do their share to help our kids or to help us in any other way. And finally, uh, Mr. Loda loves to ask about 
whether I have a plan B when it comes to early childhood education after school. Well, I'd like to see his plan A. I haven't heard one. I haven't seen one. I haven't seen a real plan. He claims he's going to find the money somewhere while we're facing a huge fiscal challenge because of open labor contracts, because of the problems of the federal government, uh, because of so many other challenges, and because he's willing to give away uh, our tax revenue to the wealthy and corporations. We're not going to actually achieve early child education and after school programs if we don't have dedicated <coughs> revenue. That's why I'm staying focused on winning this plan in Albany for the good of all, and particularly for the good of our kids. With that, I welcome your questions. Loder has said a few times that you're going to, you know, tax the middle class, you're not going to stop at taxing the wealthy. Can you respond to that? Can you guarantee you're not going to? I've, I've been asked so many times I can't count what my plan is. It's only uh, an income tax surcharge on those who make a half million or more for five years. I said it abundantly clear. I started a year ago saying this will not raise other taxes. I don't believe in raising other taxes. I do believe in asking the wealthy to do their fair share to help our kids. But no, do, do you think it'll absolutely absolutely <coughs> happen next year, though? Would you be satisfied if it happened in 2015, or does it have to happen next year? With all due respect to the job you do, and I respect the job you do, um, everyone seems to want me to bargain against myself, and I just won't do it. Uh, the people of this city believe, check every survey you want, they believe in the power of early child education. More and more evidence is mounting every day. Look at the cover of one of our major newspapers today. Uh, it's abundantly clear if we don't devote ourselves to early child education, our school system will not be good enough. If we don't devote ourselves to after school, our kids won't get the help they need. I'm not backing down on that, and we will win in Albany by creating the support for it. What about the fact, though, that at this point, Governor Cuomo, I mean, you have to admit, he is very lukewarm on this idea, which means that he's more against it than he is for it. That, you and, know if what? He, and if he puts the kibosh on it, there's, no, there's nothing I, else. So what else respectfully, would you do? Respectfully, if I hear one more interpretation of his words, could we just look at the quote he has said? He will look at the plan. He welcomes a discussion of the plan. And by the way, many, many leaders have one view on October 22nd that may not be the view they have on April 1st of the following year. So let's just accept the fact that clearly the governor's made clear his larger philosophy on taxation, and his purview is state taxation. And he may well take actions on that front, but he has said clearly he keeps an open mind. And most importantly, we will build support. I'd like to remind everyone we're in a democracy. If you build enough support for an idea, People who previously opposed it can come to learn that it's the right idea. But if you don't get that support, what is your plan B? Again, I am just going to keep saying it until someday it crashes through, respectfully. I believe this is what we need. I am going to organize support for it. I'm going to fight with all I've got to get it done. I believe the people will be with me. I believe we'll get it done. So Mr. Loder seemed to be uh, much more on the talk tonight. He had a couple of lines in his back pocket. Can you respond to that? I didn't quite get the Mad Hatter line. I was trying to, uh, I think that was a little dated. Uh, <laughs> If I had said that to my kids, they wouldn't have known what the heck he was talking about. So, um, look, um, he, he had an approach, but he didn't answer the fundamental contradictions that I talked about a few moments ago. I, I respect um, uh, zingy one-liners, but it doesn't replace substance, it doesn't replace policy, it doesn't replace the lack of a vision. He doesn't have a vision for the future of this city except to say more of the same. And Lord knows we learned this in the primary. People do not want more of the same. They want to see some real changes. They want to see us address the inequalities of the city, and he's not offering a solution. How would you rate his debate performance tonight compared to the previous debate? Guys, respectfully, I'm not in the debate rating business. <laughs> I'm in the business of trying to win an election so I can lead this city in a new direction. How about your performance and your best moment? I feel good about uh, having gotten my message out, uh, clearly on addressing the inequalities in the city. And um, look, I appreciate any opportunity to articulate the vision uh, as you know, my passion is making these changes on early childhood education and after school. I'm glad they were thoroughly debated, because I think it gives a chance for New Yorkers to see how central it is to my vision for our future. One or two more, please. If this is about the future, why do the two of you keep talking about Rudy Giuliani and David Dakins, neither of whom has been mayor for 12 years? Uh, the bottom line here is I'm offering a vision for the future of the city. I don't hear Mr. Loda offering it. What I see Mr. Loda doing is attempting very, very negative tactics and divisive tactics. And unfortunately, I think he learned them at the knee of Rudy Giuliani. Uh, and he wants to repeat the tone. If you listen carefully, the tone's exactly the same. Again, if you look at that ad, today, by the way, is apparently the 25th anniversary of the airing, the first airing of the Willie Horton ad. And how apropos, because you put his ad, I, I'd like to ask all of you in your free time, put his ad up against the Willie Orton ad and look at the parallels and look at the comparison. It will be striking.
Last question, guys. Do you think that, based on the race baiting line tonight, do you think Joe Loda is racist? Do you think that the ad was... I don't think Joe Loda is racist. No, I think that ad was race baiting. I think you can see it abundantly clearly in the imagery of the ad. And again, uh, it's a clear as the day is long that Rudy Giuliani consistently engaged in race baiting tactics, and Joe Loda's picked up where Giuliani left off. Great. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Guys. Fire away. Okay, good. Joe, how was your performance tonight compared to last time? You, it sounded like you had a few zingers in your back pocket uh, ready to go to be a little bit more on the defense. I think I was, uh, as you could tell, a lot more comfortable being up there. Um, you know, I wanted to go into this uh, debate being Joe Loda, and that's what you saw tonight. You saw the real Joe Loda. Okay, when de Blasio was just out here, he says that you're just doing the race baiting that Giuliani did back in the, back in the 80s. What's your response to that? You know, he's like a one-note Charlie. It's just unbelievable. Uh, the idea that I'm a race baiter is absolutely outrageous. And that advertisement is not race baiting. And as I said, and I'll say it again in here, you want to talk about throwing out the race card? Why aren't we talking about the mass cards for all of the people who died over the years because of the uh, what happened during the Dinkins administration, 2,000 murders a year? Why don't we talk about the report cards? for all of the kids who were failing. You know, Bill de Blasio wants to keep failed schools open. That's immoral. What about the scorecard that says we are the highest tax city in the United States of America? Look, we can't be raising taxes. We can't be doing what Bill de Blasio is saying. And quite honestly, you know, it's amazing to have somebody call me a racist. I mean, you want to talk about being, div being divisive or divisive? You want to talk about somebody who has no idea what they're talking about? Uh, it's just amazing to me that he's allowed to get away with that. You said repeatedly you think de Blasio is going to raise taxes on the middle class. What is that based on? There hasn't been a politician at all who has talked about raising taxes for the rich, who then ultimately also, almost simultaneously, raises taxes on the middle class. And Bill de Blasio is nothing more than a career politician. He's not going to do anything different. But if, if his plan in Albany doesn't get passed, then what is the tax on the middle class that he's going to raise? Because you're also saying you don't think Cuomo is going to pass oh, I don't think I don't think I don't think for a second that Andrew mm -hmm. Cuomo is going to pass this plan, either next year when he runs for his re-election or the following year when, if in fact he is re-elected. I mean, I don't know what Bill de Blasio wants to do, but the only alternative he has is to raise the property tax. That's the only alternative. He doesn't have the... Be careful here. He doesn't have... <laughs> getting better. Um, he doesn't have the guts to say his plan B is to raise another tax. He says he's just going to go back and try to do something that is not going to get past the legislature. It's not. It's not up to Andrew Cuomo. It's up to the state senate. It's up to the assembly. And they're both going by the wayside. This tax proposal of his is dead on arrival. I was going to call it DOA, but I didn't have to. Maurice Dubois understands that it's DOA. And so it's DOA. Clear, you think when it doesn't happen, in your opinion, then I don't know what, the property look, tax. Look, I, you know what? The fact that he doesn't have a plan B also goes to the fact when you ask him a question. How many questions were asked of him tonight that he did not answer? I mean, there's no there there, there's no substance there. You peel away. You don't have to peel many leaves of this onion back to see it. You peel it back a little bit, and there's nothing there. And quite honestly, it shouldn't surprise anyone that he doesn't have a plan B. He barely has a plan A. He accused you tonight of not having specific plans on how you would do pre-K, other than saying you'll find it somewhere in the budget. Where exactly... I have, that? there are numerous ways, there are different ideas. I can stand here tonight and give you a hundred different ways our budget can be reduced without reducing service. Let me give you one. Uh, we have five pension systems in the city of New York. We have five presidents of the pension system, we have five executive vice presidents, we have five general counsels, we have five procurement offices, we have five investment offices. Merge it all together into one pension <laughs> system, get rid of this excess surplus that we have uh, with all of these lawyers and everybody else around, have one system, have it properly invested, and we will end up, combined with the combined computer system, probably over $100 million a year. So I'm one-fifth of the way there. Uh, look, Beth, I've been a budget director of the city of New York. I had more fun when I was budget director than ever in my life because I was able to figure out how to take the people's money, and I never forgot that the money that the city of New York has isn't New York City's money. It belongs to the people. It was my job to stretch it as far as I possibly good, could. Go back to the record and look at what I did. I did it for both Rudy Giuliani. I definitely did it for Peter Vallone. Peter Vallone was so happy that when I was budget director and used to regale the fact 
of uh, what it was like in prior years and in prior administrations where he didn't get anything for additional programs. Uh, Mayor Giuliani, when there was extra money, gave Peter Vallone the opportunity to expand programs because he understood partnership. He understood bipartisanship, something that Bill de Blasio hasn't the foggiest idea. All he wants to do is to talk about, you know, Tea Party stuff and, you know, Republican Party stuff. The fact of the matter is, those of you who've known me over the years know I successfully worked for a Democratic governor. I successfully worked for a Republican mayor. I'm proud of what I did. I was given tasks that people thought were impossible. Newspapers thought, my God, how can you go working for, you know, for Rudy Giuliani, and then you go to work for Jim Dolan, then you go to work for Andrew Cuomo at the MTA. What am I, a glutton for punishment? No. Give me a problem, and I solve it. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. We have to do this for the people of New York. Did it bother you that he associated you with the Tea Party or that he was looking to do No, that? no, he did it last time, too. And my reference to the Mad Hatter, it just reminded me of that crazy old crank who all he kept talking about is tea, 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 more tea, more tea, dunking my stuff in tea. Look, all he wants to do is talk about tea. He is a Mad Hatter, honestly. He has nothing to talk about. There's no policies. He has no plans. Sure, he has a lot of nice words. He has a lot of bullet points. Peel it back. There's an empty box. There's nothing there. What voters did you get tonight that you didn't get after the first debate? First you know, I'm looking for votes all over the city of New York. I'm trying to be the, you know, I want to be the mayor of all New York. Uh, you know what? I really have to uh, watch the debate to be able to answer your question, Leslie. Uh, you know, when you're standing up there, you're thinking, you're listening. Uh, to the question, then you're listening to the answer, and then you're also trying to think about what the next answer is. Self-awareness seems to get thrown out the window uh, with that, so um, it's not possible to answer that question. Yeah. Do you, Joe, do you, do you own a gun? Time, there was some confusion about that. I do not, I do not own a gun. The Staten Island Advance said that I owned a gun. They corrected <laughs> it the next day. I talked to um, uh, Jessica, talked to Robleski, Tom Robleski, who wrote that, and I believe they ran uh, the very next day, two days later, because of the timing of how that works. A correction. I do not own a gun. Have you ever? I have never owned a gun. Do you think the unions would support merging the five pension funds? I know some other folks have run into some. Well, I'll do it differently than, than uh, Bloomberg and uh, Lou did it. They didn't even talk to the unions. They just went out there and did it. That's not how you get things done in the city. You've got to talk to people. You've got to cajole them. You've got to give them something in return to be able to merge the five pension uh, systems. What would you give them? I don't negotiate in public. You know <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much that would save? Uh, with the computer systems, close to $100 million a year. Hey, Joe, one more question. You mentioned you, you felt more comfortable, that you were the real Joe Loda tonight as opposed to the first debate. Just what, what changed in a week? You know, it's a really good question. I don't know. You know, last week in the debate, um, I thought we came there to talk about issues. He came there to just, you know, bludgeon me with the Tea Party. Tea Party, Tea Party, Tea Party. You know, quite honestly, I was prepared to discuss issues. I'm still prepared to discuss issues. But if he wants to play that way, go for it. This is like a boxing match. It's all coming down to the last round. Looking forward to next week. Where is he? <laughs> he didn't come tonight. Jacob didn't come. He must be dead. Yeah. <laughs>